Finally, after years of searching and saving, I managed to find a Taito Vulik style candy cab. Known as Chulixes, or Chewies for short, almost identical in design as the ones from Japan, usually with a Pandora's box and the worst buttons and sticks I have ever seen. I was on a super tight budget, but I wanted to make it as fun and as personalized as I could within my means. So I documented the transformation. In this video, I'm gonna share how and what I did to customize it for me, what silent buttons and sticks I went with, audio solutions, and what the heck is going on with this thing? And after all that, was it even worth it? So stick around, get some ideas and some inspiration. I was really fortunate to find a used one locally in my area. If you can't find one in your area, check out the Vulix Chulix Facebook group and other online groups and forums. These groups often have for sale listings, they do group purchases to save on overseas shipping, and they have some other resources that may help you. The one I found was from a family amusement center. You can see here the card reader is still on it. So the first thing I did was I just removed all the junk, the Pandora's box, the card reader, all the buttons and sticks, the JAMA harness, and all the other harnesses. It didn't appear to be grounded properly and everything inside was connected to a Chinese type one outlet duplex thing. So I bypassed all of that. I dropped in a good power strip for everything to plug into. I used the included 12 volt power supply to power the coin mech, LEDs, the audio amplifier, and the cabinet fans. Fortunately, the DC power supply accepts 120 volts, so I converted the power supply's AC input to a grounded Edison plug. Since this is a budget build, I kept the existing 720p monitor. It has HDMI inputs and it also works on US power. I swapped out the Chinese C13 power cable for a standard US cable. With everything connected to the power strip and grounded safely, I can just use a smart plug for turning it on and off. For the computer, I found a used Dell Optiplex for 160 bucks at a pawn shop. These are everywhere on the used market. Offices all over have these Dells and they liquidate them all the time. It's a Core i5 with an NVIDIA GT 1030. It's more than enough power for retro gaming. So far it's handled everything I've thrown at it up to Wii at native resolution and some casual Steam games. It was too big to fit in the cab, so I removed it from its case and screwed it down with some PCB feet. I configured the BIOS to auto boot when it receives power and it boots right into the big box front end. I slipped the PC power LED switch through the front panel so I know when it's safe to cut off the power after it's fully shut down. For audio, I used the existing four speakers. They were all daisy chained and bridged to mono, so I clipped and spliced the wires to make them into a stereo pair. I used a cheap 12 volt amplifier board that I got from Amazon, wired it directly to the DC power supply. It receives audio from the 3.5 millimeter output on the computer. Since everything is grounded to the same power strip, ground loop noise from the amp is pretty minimal. You will get a cleaner sound with an HDMI audio extractor, but I skipped that to save on cost. I connected this little audio switch in between the computer and the amp so that I can switch the audio to a panel mount headphone jack or output to the internal speakers. It provides volume control, and I used the case as a template to drill the holes into the sub panel and secured the PCB underneath with some hot glue. I spray painted the sub panel blue to match the cab trim, and I finished it off with a shiny plastic knob and made the labels with a vinyl cutter. I found a little subwoofer for $4 at Goodwill, and I managed to shoehorn it into the bottom cavity for a little extra base. I added a panel mount HDMI with a USB port for some extra I.O. The HDMI is connected to a splitter so that I can mirror the output to a capture card for live streaming. Currently, I stream virtual pinball on Twitch. I plan on using this Chulix to add retro gaming to my channel. Twitch link in the description. 
The last thing I want to mention about the audio is a little free application called Equalizer APO. It is deceptively powerful. I'm using the Equalizer feature to tune my speakers a bit better. There's a lot of advanced things you can do with it, and anyone gaming on a PC, modern or retro, can benefit from it. Check it out, it's free, you will be glad you did. Now, when it comes to buttons and sticks, you can't cut corners. Since this will also be used for streaming, I chose a Samitsu silent stick with silent Sanwa buttons. Loud clicky buttons will get really annoying during a stream. The Samitsu stick is absolutely amazing. It's quiet, but you still get that positive feedback from it. And it has a unique rounded square gate with a slightly shorter throw than the JLF. And I am very happy with it. It is double the price of a regular stick though. So I put a standard Sanwa JLF on player two to save money since I don't expect to be streaming with two players. The silent Sanwa buttons are great, but they take some time getting used to. The controls are wired to a pair of zero delay USB encoders from Amazon that work fine on a dedicated emulation PC. I also stacked a couple of extra M4 nuts underneath the sticks so that the sticks sit lower in the control panel. I filled the controller cavity with scrap foam. It helps to dampen that hollow sound and it makes the control panel just feel more solid. I couldn't justify the cost for a, a custom printed control panel though. So I made a simple vinyl graphic and illustrator and I cut it out with my Cricut vinyl cutter. I also used it to make my kilted player 1 and 2 buttons because kilts are my style. I ran a USB LED strip inside the translate in the control panel. I didn't theme it for a particular game with a move list and I didn't want to give it a crazy like multi-cade character mashup thing. I just wanted it to be different, so I made a minimal graphic inspired by the Vulix style with my own living arcade theme. I had a lot of difficulty with coin mech, but in this video up here, or maybe here, I don't know how this thing works, we'll figure it out. But in this video, attached somewhere, is a more detailed breakdown of how I got the coin mech working. I love the look of the Taito ashtrays full of coins and all those Japanese arcades, but I cannot justify $30 for an ashtray. So I found this blue silicone one on Amazon. I made a vinyl graphic for it with my living arcade theme and I'm very happy with the look. And it's functional. For the marquee, I wrapped it in some blue vinyl and I cut some adhesive foil to give it some shiny accents and some trims. I used printable vinyl and the print and cut feature of my Cricut to make the Vulix style warning labels. I found this magnetic cup holder at Harbor Freight. I didn't want to drill holes for a cup holder. And I don't really like the way cup holders look on arcade cabs, but I don't really like drinks on them either. The magnets are rubber coated so they won't scratch it and I can just stick it on the back out of sight when I'm not using it. For the sub panel, I decided to use a Stream Deck Mini instead of adding extra menu buttons. I thought it would be really cool to see if I could fit the Stream Deck inside the card reader. So I completely gutted it and carved away with my Dremel. After making a huge mess, I managed to fit it in there with some creative shimming and some hot glue. I made a bezel trim with uh, black vinyl and cut a little LED strip to fit it. I soldered a jumper to connect both strips to each other so that they light up together on the control panel, and I think it looks pretty cool. Now I imagine some of you saying, I thought this was a budget build. Stream decks are expensive. Yes, they are. But you need some additional buttons for certain emulator functions. 
I don't want to interrupt my arcade experience with a keyboard and mouse while playing and browsing my games. I also don't want to accidentally hit the exit emulator button combination and get kicked out of a game while I'm mashing away in a boss battle. Please share in the comments if you've had that happen to you. I can't be the only one. All the buttons are customized and labeled on the Stream Deck with smart profiles. The buttons change depending on what application is running. I have it mapped to all kinds of shortcuts, macros, all kinds of stuff. The buttons are labeled, making it very intuitive for when I have friends over. Sometimes I have just a wallpaper image on it because it looks cool when the game launches. Please leave a comment if you want me to do a video on using the Stream Deck on an arcade cab. After all of this, is it worth it? Absolutely. Even though it doesn't have a CRT, the CRT shaders in RetroArch are awesome. The Bezel Project is an amazing group that makes graphics to fill the black bars on the sides. It is a 16x9 screen, so it's also compatible with modern games and consoles. It's quite versatile and the form factor is perfect. It's big and sturdy enough for that authentic arcade feel, but it doesn't dominate the space, as you can see behind me. It's sturdy and solid, it's easy to move on its wheels, and you can lower the leveling feet for more stability. The control panel can be removed and secured vertically with brackets to make it slim enough to roll it sideways through a doorway, which is a great feature because there's nothing worse than coming home with your Dream CRT Candy Cab only to find out that it won't fit through the door of your game room. The control panel sticks out far enough to where you can comfortably sit and play with two people and it just looks really cool. I even find myself playing modern games on it with a wireless pad because I like it so much. It's well worth the effort of hunting one down. I hope this inspires you and gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. And seriously, check out my Twitch channel. Oh man. Whoa! That was crazy! And I plan on using this Chulix to add retro gaming to my channel. Twitch link in the just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trying to be shameless at the same time. Tonight on Johnny Tryhard. That should be good enough. We'll see. We'll see what I get.